Since the beginning of the pandemic, Australia has experienced some of the strictest mandates and regulations compared to any other country. So when our, our own Brit Clement was fortunate to touch down in her home country, you see her smiles right there, after nearly two years for an emotional journey, it was a unique way for one of our journalists to share her own personal experience. Take a listen. To get here, it's been quite a ride for everyone, all Aussie expats. We've missed funerals, weddings, precious time with grandparents and parents. It's been tough. I had to get back Hi. two months ago because my family's terminally ill. I couldn't get there in time. It's good to go back, so I'll support the rest of the family that's still left. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the seats on my flight sold out within 20 minutes. And because there's a tight quota on the number of people who are allowed into Australia each day, it's notoriously hard to get a ticket on a commercial airline. Finally boarding. The flight. Very exciting. <laughs> and Britt's joining us now with more on her long-awaited homecoming. Britt, so glad to see you, and thank you so much for waking up so darn early for us this morning. Not a worry, it's a pleasure. <laughs> well, this is the first time uh, that you and thousands of expats have actually stepped foot there in Australia since lockdown began. Can you describe just the emotions that you felt while trying to get that flight home and then finally landing? All the emotions, all of them. Um, the overwhelming one being relief. And I think that was shared by everyone on my flight and, and everyone who's managed to get one of those golden tickets back to Australia. Uh, then the next probably dominating emotion is frustration. You know, the way it works is that you you don't know when the flights are gonna be released and you don't know what time. So for three weeks, every morning, I waited by my laptop to for one of those emails to come through. And as I said, in that package, it sold out within 20 minutes. The flight uh, out of London sold out within seven minutes. The flight within India sold out within two minutes. I mean, it's, it's extremely anxiety inducing. Now there's a quota on the number of people who can come into Australia each day and those uh, caps were reduced to 3,000 people per week arriving in Australia. And that, that's about 25 passengers per flight on commercial airlines. And what the airlines have done in order to actually profit out of this or to at least uh, make some money from these flights uh, is to hike up prices. So for many people, these flights are out of reach. And uh, I feel immensely lucky to, to have been one of them uh, who have been able to get home. Mm. For sure. And, and, and Britt, here in the United States, as you know, the COVID regulations have been much different uh, than co compared to Australia. Uh, but you've been living in Hong Kong, reporting for us from there for the majority of the time that you were away from Australia. So what was it like going from Hong Kong and, and what life was like there to, uh, to Australia? Were you apprehensive about the traveling from one country to another? Yeah, well, look, Hong Kong and, and Australia, Terry, are quite similar in their COVID strategies. They're, they're chasing COVID zero. So Hong Kong has about the same kind of strict border policy as Australia. In, if you come from some places to Hong Kong, uh, you have to do 21 days hotel quarantine. That's the longest running ho hotel quarantine in the world. Uh, mask wearing in Hong Kong is extremely strict. You know, they haven't had cases in weeks in Hong Kong and you're still wearing masks on the, on the street. Even if it seems a little bit, uh, you know, excessive, that's just what you do. Those are the measures taken. So, you know, I'm quite used to that. And when you get used to that very safe cocoon, breaking out of that is quite uh, anxiety-inducing again. You know, that's a, that's a running theme throughout my experience. I first went to Frankfurt. I moved from Frankfurt. And just being on the streets with people who weren't wearing masks was kind of alarming. And, and even as a vaccinated person, you do feel uh, that level of, of stress um, and worry. And But what I have learned from this experience is that there's two sides to the coin. You know, Australia's been extremely strict. Hong Kong has been extremely strict. But I haven't had to worry about my family here in Australia. My family in South Australia and Tasmania barely know what pandemic life is 
is about for, for many others. I just haven't had to worry. 1,500 deaths in Australia compared to other countries, including the States, it's a fraction. So you just haven't had that worry. At the same time, at some point when vaccination levels have been boosted, and it did take Australia a little while to get the vaccine, to procure the right amount of vaccines, it's time to uh, um, to start living with the virus in, in a more real way. Uh, it's just not sustainable to keep families apart for this long. And to it, at some point, it starts being a little bit cruel. Well, let's let's describe where you are. You're currently in a two week quarantine there in a government run facility. Um, you are served your meals by people in hazmat suits. We also heard that you can't bring any alcohol into the facility. So I promise Terry and I will spring for sure. some Australian wine. Uh, once you are able to leave, we'll get you to one of those nice wineries I've heard all about. Um, but yeah, right. I don't know. Yeah, I, okay, it's on us, I promise. It's a little fruity, the wine. I don't know if we, you know. But anyway, can you in any way give us a, a tour or kind of, I don't know if you can pick up your laptop or move around, kind of give us an idea yeah. of what it looks like and what it's like day to day in that facility. So the room, I mean, it reminds me of my, you know, university room or boarding school room. It's it's kind of, it's kind of, um, you know, an institutional standard room, but outside, I've got this incredible balcony, which you just don't get when you're staying at a hotel. Mm, so wow. I can stay out here as long as I'm wearing a mask and as long as we social distance, I can talk to my neighbors. And, mm. and that kind of social engagement is really important in isolation. One of the things that is a, a challenge is the boredom and just passing the time. Uh, so, so, being able to communicate with people and, and staying connected, uh, FaceTiming relatives, that, was, that stuff becomes extremely important. And just to give you a wider context about where I am, I'm in the top end of Australia. It doesn't get more bush than this. I am out of the bush. Uh, and I guess, you know, even though I'm, I'm second week in Australia uh, in, in quarantine, which is the hardest, it just seems to go a little bit slower in this second week you get this uh, feeling that, that we're almost there and we're kind of cheering each other on in, in that way as well. And I can smell the eucalyptus trees. I saw a possum last night uh, and it just feels, it just reminds me that, that I'm here, I'm home. It, it's uh, just the fellowship of the quarantine there. And you are just a few days away from seeing your family and your friends and other loved ones. So what are you most excited for when you finally make it home? And what's one of the first things you plan to do when you get there? You know, it's the little things, isn't it? And I, I just can't wait to sit with my grandma and catch up on lost time, uh, to, to sit with my sister, my, my parents, and, and, and yeah, catch up on that time that really does feel kind of stolen from me. Uh, aside from that, it's enjoying my freedom. I cannot wait to get in the ocean. I can't wait for, for real coffee. And I can't wait for that Barossa Shiraz that, that you guys are going to send me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she even told us exactly what she wants. Shiraz, okay, made it's it a easy. Shiraz. Thank you. I'll send you the variety, everything. Done. Yeah, I, I promise you, we're on it. We are definitely on it. Britt, Clement, it was so great to talk with you, see you. Uh, I know you can't wait to be released from quarantine. Have fun with your family. Enjoy those talks, especially with Grandma. Those are special. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.